Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay, so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the independence and fighting spirit of those of you who have Mars in the second house within your birth chart, but also for those of you who have the sign of Aries ruling your second house within your birth chart as well, so stay tuned. However, before we do dive into today's video, certainly make sure that you give this video a like if you do like it. Also, make sure to subscribe if you have not already and to, of course, click that little bell icon so that you can keep yourself updated with further content from myself. Another thing to mention is that um, if you would like any personal readings from me or if you're interested in some practical ebooks or in any merchandise pieces I have available, then you can go to the links in the description box below you can visit my website. And one more quick thing is that if you wanna keep up to date with me on Instagram, you can follow me at Hannah's Elsewhere. I make some fun astrology posts over there. Okay, so with all of those introductions out of the way, Mars in the second house and Aries ruling the second house individuals, let's do this. Okay, so if you have Mars in the second house or the sign of Aries ruling your second house, then what this suggests is that you aim to make your own living. <laughs> so making a living as your own boss, for example, or as an entrepreneur, or simply just knowing that you have created your own source of income via a job, etc. And quite honestly, you might dislike the notion of being chained to the system. Perhaps it's important to you that you have independence when it comes to the world of finances and materials. And so in this respect, you don't typically fit into a societal mold, which can also be seen through your self-worth. So for example, you just might wear whatever you want, or you might have an attitude that says, I'm gonna like what I'm gonna like. I don't have to justify myself to others. And you may also have an attitude where you think, you know what, I'm gonna be attracted to who I am attracted to, and I'm not gonna be ashamed for it. And if others have anything to say on these matters, then they can say it to my face. <laughs> Perhaps you actually respect and value directness. You value people who say it like it is, who are honest, who get straight to the point, no beating around the bush, just come out with it. And so therefore, when it comes to your self-worth, it's this attitude of, do not tell me who I am or what I am worth because others do not define these things. I do. Which is quite interesting to me if you do happen to have a Pisces rising along with Aries in the second house. Because as a Pisces rising person, others tend to see what they want to see in you. They project onto you and you act as a mirror. But at the same time, you're also doing the same towards others, which can get well, it can result in you getting caught up in a strange feedback loop, which I'm sure at worst at times can drive you crazy. And so maybe this independent self-worth, it kicks in. And you think, no more, I'm over it. I don't want to define myself based on other people's perceptions. Still, however, looking at Mars in the second house or Aries in the second house there in an overall sense, you really do value your independence and your freedom. And if not now, I think this is what you come to learn with growth and experience. So for example, maybe you feel stronger when you stand up to someone or when you set boundaries or when you are crystal clear with someone. These actions, they showcase your self-worth or maybe you feel deep satisfaction knowing, hey, I did that or, I was able to pay for that on my own, or I was actually able to face that situation head on, even though I was terrified whilst doing it. 
perhaps being brave and courageous and these things play a big role when it comes to your self-worth and also when it comes to your financial decisions and matters. So being scared of doing something or buying something or owning something, but doing it regardless, you know, or being afraid of what others think, but putting yourself out there anyway. And whilst all of this is happening, well, perhaps you get into arguments and confrontations with others. So for example, you might fight with a friend or with a partner who doesn't do what you want them to do. So this could be the likes of you getting into conflict with them over money or over possessions. Yeah, you just might be super defensive towards those who don't agree with your financial slash material decisions and choices. <sighs> yeah, next thing you know, you are arguing with your partner because you bought something without really asking for their input first. Maybe it was supposed to be a um, cooperative matter or you were supposed to kind of come up with the decision together. <laughs> And you know, maybe you learned, you learned that your survival comes first. And so your wants and your desires, they also come first. But compromising, cooperating, negotiating, these things with others, um, yeah, there's some challenges up ahead or some challenges that play out within your life. So, Let's look at some things that could have played out throughout your childhood growing up, which may have impacted you today. Maybe anything you wanted as a child was given to you instantly, in a heartbeat. Or maybe for others of you, your physical security, it involved things like aggression, threat, possibly even violence, or perhaps there was anger and hostility when it came to materials and possessions, or it could have been a situation where your individual values, they were not met by your parents and so you didn't feel protected, resulting in you having to fight for your survival needs, or perhaps you were even bullied into doing things that you didn't want to do. Naturally, this is why it's really good to consider the sign that Mars is in along with those aspects because these things can provide more information or different information, but these are just some possibilities as to how things may have played out for you, Mars in the second house, Aries ruling the second house individuals. They're just taking it a step back here. Maybe it played out differently for others of you, okay? Such as you being given what you wanted instantly. That is a point that I made previously. Maybe you would become angry anytime you didn't get what you wanted. You would throw many temper tantrums and so this behavior, it follows you into adulthood. Meaning you become irritated and annoyed or irrational when things don't happen fast. And when they don't happen, when you want them to happen. Now, having said that, perhaps your selfishness, sort of me first attitude, perhaps it settles with maturity and growth. I mean, maybe you come to learn that your self-worth is not dependent on what you want or on what you pursue. It's not dependent on the goals that you have. And so during times when a situation doesn't go your way, for example, that doesn't mean that you aren't good enough. That doesn't mean that you don't matter. Perhaps by handing over things to others, so to speak, there's strength to be found within yourself. So for example, this could look like you putting your trust, putting your faith in a significant other by giving them space to do something for themselves rather than you intruding or interrupting out of fear of them doing it wrong. Or this could look like you allowing a friend to decide what you both do during a day together. Let them come up with the plan or come up with suggestions rather than assuming that you always have to do it. Now, with that being said, I do also understand that you're perhaps so independent, <laughs> so independent that you feel like an island as if you don't actually need anybody and I also get that these feelings may just stem from being in a volatile relationship or being in relationships that 
did not pan out very well. They were very unsettling. They didn't go well. But I think you can have this tendency of pushing others away when you present this, I don't need anybody attitude. You know, so maybe it's about recognizing when people do want to help, when people want to join in, when people want to be a part of your life, when people want to share whilst they're also valuing your independence. But looking more specifically at your self-worth, putting others first sometimes doesn't mean they have power over you or that they've won something or somebody else obtaining something that you wish to pursue doesn't mean you're a failure or that somebody else has beaten you to the finish line or that they've beaten you in some competition that you've made up. Oh, and when you accept help, when you accept a lending hand, that doesn't mean you are incapable of doing something yourself. Then again, then again, perhaps the self-worth part of this comes in when you accept that there are things you actually can't do on your own. <laughs> there are things that you actually aren't capable of doing solo and that's okay. <laughs> Self-acceptance, I suppose, is an important thing to recognize or maybe even just showing yourself some gentleness um, would come in handy. Um, yeah, these are things to consider Mars in the second house, Aries ruling the second house individuals. But having said all of these things, I also think it's you who has this get up and go energy when it comes to all things material and financial. You are motivated, you are driven when it comes to the physical world and there's certainly no stopping you when it comes to pursuing your material and your financial goals. <laughs> you work so hard. You're such determined people. You present this fighting spirit, this strong will that says, I will not give up no matter what. And so in this respect, you just might be a financial leader or a financial trailblazer. For example, perhaps you start your own company, you start your own business, or even if you don't start your own company or business and you work within a certain company or business, maybe you work up the ladder or you take a leadership position or perhaps you become a lead financial advisor or maybe you design your own product, something that is innovative, is fresh and new. Then again, there may be others of you who actually earn a living through things like self-defense or through fighting or even war so being a part of the military is an example here or quite possibly you earn a living through fitness or sports or coaching but regardless of the occupation itself you are typically the types of people who are so active when it comes to earning an income you are continuously on the move, continuously reaching new targets, hitting new goals. Perhaps you actually desire financial freedom. <laughs> this could be a big, big goal of yours. So this idea of doing something that truly speaks to you, something that sets you free from always having to worry and stress about money. Or perhaps it's important that creation is a part of your income. So being able to use your creativity as a source of income or maybe inspiring others or motivating others is a passion of yours. So you could have these dreams perhaps of being an artist or an actor or a filmmaker or a singer. And like I said, there's the potentialities of becoming a coach. Again, regardless of what you actually do, maybe keeping the spark alive is truly important to you. And so therefore, perhaps you jump from job to job, or maybe you seek a position where you are a leader, something where you don't have to take directions from other people. And so again, you jump from job to job until you get that position. Now again, make sure that you are considering the sign Mars is in along with aspects because these things could provide more information. Though another thing to mention is to do with how 
quickly you spend money. <laughs> yeah, you might be the type of person who, yes, you work really hard at your goals, etc., your financial goals, <laughs> but then um, you're also very quick to buy new items and materials, which can suggest that you find it challenging to say no uh, to your shopping slash spending impulses. <laughs> Then again, perhaps there's others of you who save pretty quickly. So if there's a certain item that you really, really want that you have your eyes on, um, maybe you save as quickly as possible for that thing, partly because you're really impatient <laughs> still, however. They, there may be times when you are pretty reckless when it comes to your spending habits. You might even spend your money on things that are slightly risky, things that you look back on and you think, why on earth did I spend my money on that? Maybe it's your impatience, maybe it's your naivety that can result in such realizations. <laughs> Though to be fair, as I say, the sign Mars is in could tell a different story. And I also think growth and maturity can change things. But oh my goodness, when you want something Mars in the second house, Aries ruling the second house individuals, you can be relentless. You might even think, screw anybody that gets in my way, or you might get into arguments with others, or you might step into competitive situations with others over these things. Maybe having a certain material item first, it makes you feel really good about yourself. In fact, you might defend and protect the things that you possess within your life. Heck, you might defend your self-worth quite strongly as well. So the moment you feel like your self-worth is being attacked, you might be quick to put that other person in their plate. So the last thing that I just want to mention is to do with how talented you can be within environments that require a lot of physical energy, but also when it comes to environments that involve you being fast and quick. So you might be very skilled when it comes to these quicker, more energetic activities that involve instant action and movement. So this could be the likes of you working within a really hands-on, physical, busy environment, or this could be the likes of you being involved with a certain sport or within a certain game. Come to think of it, when you are a part of a particular game or sport, it's you who wants to win Mars in the second house, Aries ruling the second house individuals. After all, you just might value winning. <laughs> Some would say your self-worth depends on it. <laughs> okay then, Cosmic Warriors. So that concludes my video all about the independence and the fighting spirit of those of you who have Mars in the second house within your birth chart, but also for those of you who have the sign of Aries ruling the second house within your birth chart as well. Now, if you do happen to have any of these placements, then please let us know what you thought of the video in the comment section down below. Did you resonate? Did you not resonate? I would love to gain your feedback. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also make sure that you give this video a like, remember, and I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye.